It's What's the Buzz with Leo. That's right, it's me, Leo! Interviewing the experts and taking you behind the scenes to find out all the buzz about the amazing work that's happening at Parks Canada to help our pollinators. Pollen heads, today's episode of What's the Buzz is mind-blowing. Did you know that Canada, the land of winter, actually has a native cactus growing here? Yup, it's true. The eastern prickly pear cactus is not only truly prickly, but it's a species at risk. We're catching up with Christina from Point Pelee National Park to find out more about this very important pollen provider, a true VIP P. Great gills, Christina. Is it true that cactus actually live in Point Pelee National Park? How is that possible? Point Pelee National Park is located on the southernmost part of mainland Canada. So we are located very south and here at Point Pelee, our winters are very mild. So people often associate cactus with a desert. So even though it's not a desert here, during the summer, it is very hot and dry. But I've heard that the prickly pear cactus may completely disappear. How can this be? Plants can be considered species at risk if their population levels or their habitat are in decline. So there are many species at risk plants at Point Pelee and prickly pear cactus is one of them. So. How would that affect our pollinators? If we were to lose prickly pear cactus, then we would lose one of our species that provides pollen for bumblebees, grasshoppers, ants, and other insects that depend on prickly pear cactus flowers. Whoa, hold your fins. So that would mean less food for our pollinators? That's right, that would be one less flower for the insects to feed on. Oh no! So what are you doing to help the eastern prickly pear cactus and our pollinating pals? To help prickly pear cactus, we do monitoring every summer where we visit every cactus patch, like the one you see here, and we count the cactus pads or the claydodes and we take measurements of how large the patch is and take pictures and make drawings. So over time, we can see if the population is increasing or decreasing or staying about the same. What's your secret for creating the ultimate pollinator buffet? Over time, uh, what happens in some of these areas is that the vegetation and trees, shrubs, they grow up and start to block the sunlight and prickly pear cactus needs a lot of sunlight to grow. Another thing we do is sometimes we'll provide extra weeding around the plants to get rid of uh, invasive grasses or small shrubs. But if you can imagine, the, the park is quite large, so we wouldn't be able to do every cactus patch. So sometimes we do a prescribed burn. Fire! Yes, that's right, pollen heads. Before you get your fins in a twist, prescribed burns have been used through the centuries to help maintain healthy ecosystems. You were saying, Christina? We do low intensity light burns and that helps burn off some of the, the grasses to provide more sunlight and to reduce competition. But doesn't it hurt the prickly pear cactus? Great question. So what we do is we wet down the cactus patches before we do a prescribed fire. Whew, and this doesn't hurt any other species of plants or animals, does it? No, we do prescribe burns in the late winter, early spring, before the other plants and animals have come out of hibernation. It may be hard to believe, but fire, when used by the professionals, is actually a great way to help our species at risk, like the eastern prickly pear cactus. Prescribed burns help any species that live in savanna habitat, such as five-line skink and monarch butterflies. One year after a prescribed burn, we had tons more common milkweed come up from the seed bank. So that year, there was a lot more food for monarch butterflies. By protecting prickly pear cactus, we are protecting an important food source for our pollinators. Well, that's certainly buzzworthy. Not only does Canada have its very own cactus, but this VIPP and its pollinators are being helped to survive and thrive under the watchful eyes of our fiery friends at Parks Canada. If you want to help the eastern prickly pear cactus or any species at risk pollen heads, always make sure you stay on the marked paths in the parks. They're there for a reason. Giving our plants a safe place to grow ensures our pollinating pals will be well fed. Ooh, speaking of which, I think it's time for a snack. Later, pollinators.